Let's go. So the third and the final day in Copenhagen and today we are exploring the beautiful historic area of Christiansborg Palace which is what you can see right behind me and this complex has been used by queens and kings for centuries so it has a history spanning across 800 years. But the recent palace, the current one has been developed in 1928. And uh, since then it has also been used as a government building. So here there is the seat of the Ministry of State, the Prime Minister and also the Supreme Court of Denmark. And in this area, when you walk, especially in this part of the palace, you have to be slightly careful because unless you want to step on horse shit. <laughs> uh, yes, so, so basically in this uh, part of the building, there are also horses and uh, sometimes, you know, they kind of shit around. So <laughs> you have to be careful. <laughs> Although they keep the premise very well maintained and neat and clean, of course, which goes without saying, but yeah, sometimes you can spot some bits here and there. Copenhagen started as a Viking fishing village close to the 10th century and since then it has grown to become an economic powerhouse of Denmark but not just of Denmark, of the whole of Scandinavia. It is one of the most uh, cosmopolitan and modern cities of Northern Europe and also is one of the financial hubs thanks to the situation, thanks to the location of the Copenhagen Stock Exchange. If you are in the Nehaven area, then you can take a light walk passing through the Lange Linie area which also has this lush green space where you can also cycle, walk or jog. On the way you will also find the Gefion fountain which has a bronze uh, statue of the Norse goddess and uh, also the St. Albans church, the tip of which you can see partially I guess <laughs> behind me. And then this is a slightly elevated area. Uh, which also gives you a very nice view of the bay and of the seaside. Next, we're heading to the Tivoli Gardens, which is a famous amusement park here in Copenhagen. And on the way, you will find an important, another important landmark, which is the National Museum of Denmark, which I am respectfully skipping because um, 
I have limited time. So today is our final day. We have just half the day at our disposal. So optimization of time is the key. But if you buy the overall Copenhagen visit pass, then the visit to this museum is included. So do not skip it in that case. And the famous Tivoli Gardens, which is an amusement park, one of the oldest amusement parks of the world. Some of the rides here have been kept preserved and well maintained since like hundreds of years in the sense that they still have uh, like a manual operator, you know, operating the gears and operating the roller coasters. So it's one iconic thing to witness inside. This place is not just for kids. It caters to all age groups, whether you are an adult, a teenager, a toddler, a small kid or even an elderly person. There are many types of rides and activities to discover on the inside. And if you want to really get an in-depth experience of this place then there is a dedicated hotel inside as well where you can stay if you're here for an extended period of time in Copenhagen. And another important bit about this place is that it is situated right next to the main central station of Copenhagen. So it's a very, very ideal location. And around this place, there are a lot of bars, pubs, restaurants, even many of them open until very late night, which is something <laughs> and it, which is an advantage here when you are in Copenhagen. So you can spend a good time. You can spend an entire day only in this area. And if you don't want to eat on the inside, on the outside there is a dedicated food hall which is called the Tivoli Food Hall where there are many stands from, you know, like cuisines with many different countries and uh, there is sushi, Japanese cuisines coming from all over the world. So no matter where you come from, you can at least experience the food from your country in the Tivoli Food Hall even if you're not planning to go on the inside. Denmark on the whole and Copenhagen in particular are big on sustainability and clean energy. The triangular structure that you can see behind me with the chimney on top is basically a power plant uh, which has been repurposed also to work as a ski resort. So basically on top of the power plant you have a big uh, ski uh, slope uh, which can be enjoyed by tourists. So there is a lot of snow, of course, in Copenhagen, but perhaps people have to go in the outskirts to enjoy the ski rides. But now they can actually have that enjoyment within the city itself. And this power plant is one of the biggest waste recycling power plant of the world. Apparently, I was told uh, during one of the boat tours that Copenhagen does not produce enough waste to actually be fed into this power plant. So they're importing waste from other countries to feed into the power plant to create clean energy for the residents of Copenhagen. Copenhagen is a continuously developing city and there are new neighborhoods being created uh, on a yearly basis, let's say. This particular neighborhood where I'm standing right now, which is also where I stayed, is called the Orestad district and this is a new, uh, newly developed uh, district in Copenhagen. So Denmark and Copenhagen included are big on sustainability like I said before and in this newly developed area which is Orestad that we are talking about you can find this uber futuristic tower which is called the Copenhagen Towers and this is a giant building which also includes the Crown Plaza Convention Center and the Crown Plaza Hotel so there are a lot of events and uh, com commercial events uh, forums and conventions happening over here and uh, it's right next also to the arena which is another important convention center inspired I imagine by the Colosseum in Rome, but it's, it's much more modern than that, of course. The unique thing about this building is that on the top there is a giant, uh, so there are very big solar panels. So building in the largest building integrated solar panel uh, of Northern Europe. So that's a unique characteristic about this building. It generates uh, power for a lot of uh, Danish homes. If you stand here, you cannot tell, but uh, 
I was staying at Crown Plaza, for example, which is in this giant tower, which is also a modern state of the art building over here. From the 18th floor where uh, my room was, you can tell that this is an extremely green space. So this is a newly built area with the state of the art modern high tech buildings, but it's right next to a natural green reserve. So when you live here, you get to experience the best of both worlds, which is a quite unique characteristic. If you consider Copenhagen, which is a very big, busy cosmopolitan city of Denmark. So that's a unique feature about this particular location. Also, it has a great location advantage if you're planning a holiday here and you want to stay in, in Copenhagen, this is a great district to stay in because this is just uh, six minutes away from the airport, which is fantastic, and also seven minutes away from the central station of Copenhagen, which is right in the city center of, uh, of this place. So it has a big location advantage in that sense. And also from a planning point of view, the train frequency here is is really good it's very efficient the public transport over here so trains can be practically every 10 minutes on regular days so you can really plan uh, your trip in advance and and be and navigate very seamlessly between this district and the city center it seems like the outskirts but it's not it's it's super new super lush super modern but at the same time very accessible from the city center so well this is this was just to get like a feel of um, a newly developed uh, place here in Copenhagen and if you liked watching this video about this lovely city uh, then do give it a thumbs up, like it, share it, love it and stay tuned for more of such informative videos on traveling in the EU and do subscribe to my channel. Good morning expat!